So, I would like to pray for us, and then we'll start, shall we? Father, here it is. Uh, I've been praying about this hour. I've been praying for these people for quite some time. You know that. And so, Father, I'm interested to hear what you have to say today. So many things on my mind, so many things on my heart, uh, Father. And yet, we know that if we listen to you, you speak so clearly. So, Father, would you, would you speak to us today in this hour? Would you give us a sense of your presence? Because we know you're here in our heads. But, Father, would you give us a sense of your presence? And then, Father, would you just speak to us today? We're going to talk about a, a subject that is, uh, I'm not an expert in, but I know you are. And so, Father, will you just guide and direct our conversation this afternoon, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my name's Gary, uh, Gary Lane, and I work at Grace Ministries International in Atlanta, Georgia. And so if you know Scott Britton, Scott is my boss. I get to hang out with him all the time, and, uh, and I, I glean from him all the time. It's a really great opportunity. Uh, I, I do uh, counseling there. I teach the lectures in the Encounter program that we have. That's our advanced training classes. And uh, sometimes uh, they let me go out of the office, and I get to travel. And So I've been to China last year, and I've been to some other places. I got back from Bulgaria in February, and so just had a great time teaching there. It was a lot of fun. So God is great. So today we're going to talk about probably, I don't know what your thoughts were when you looked at this title, but we want to talk about emotions, don't we? And so everybody set me up really well. If you've listened to the session so far from yesterday, Andrew, and then this morning all day long, my job is easy at this point. You understand already, okay? And so I want to look at just uh, three things. I want to look at the word emotion. I'm going to try and draw this out here just a little bit. I want to look at the word feeling. And then thought. Okay, and I like to teach and I like to be interactive. So if you've got a thought or you've got a word, rip it out. Just say it loud enough so I don't have to repeat it so we can hear it for everybody there. Uh, Emotions, feelings, and thoughts. Or the word emotion, the word feeling, the word thought. What's the first emotion you think of in the Bible? Everybody knows. What's the first emotion we heard? Anger. Anger. There you go, right? But where, where's the very first emotion? Fear. Come on. Fear. fear. Adam and Eve hid because they were afraid. afraid. So there's fear over here. Is anger an emotion? Give me some other. Give me some more emotions. Sadness. Sadness. Sadness, okay. Is joy an emotion? Absolutely. All right, what else? Confusion. Confusion? Is that what I heard? Confusion? I don't know how to spell that, okay. How about, what else? Rejection. Rejection, is that okay? Embarrassment. Embarrassment, yeah. That's what I'm feeling. Embarrassment. Anxiety. I have that today. Right? Happiness. happiness. We'll put happiness in here. It, it goes on and on, doesn't it? Jealousy. Jealousy. There's a good one. My mother hopes I spell that right. Compassion. Anything else? There's tons, aren't there? Their emotions, okay? Now, the weird, the weird thing about emotions are, emotions, do you, do you ever see the word emotions in the Bible? It's really not there. It really talks about our feelings, doesn't it? And, and emotions is an interesting word. It really came about the Stoics, like we heard earlier, Stoics were all about knowledge over here in the thought, and they were trying to eliminate feelings. But emotions literally were just this thing that that like now we have emoticons, don't we? Like my, my son and daughter, they're 19 and 21, the two that are still in the house, they just text me little pictures. <laughs> There's not really any wording in there. There's just smiley face, happy eyeballs, you know. My wife is sick. I said, how are you today? She said, I, I feel a little better. I, 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 I emoticoned back a little face with a little kiss with pooched lips, you know. <laughs> Right, so emotions are like this outward expression. 
that it's kind of you and I, I want to define some terms because we talk in, in grace circles of again defining terms and so emotions, this expression of what's really going on on the inside of me, isn't it? Because where where are if I if you look at these three words, emotion, feeling, and thought, where do they all live? They're on the inside, aren't they? And if we want to get into grace, they're in our soul, aren't they? Because we tell people all the time, our spirit, it's that, it's that God-relating part of it, that soul, that's our personality. And we've heard today that our personality, and, it, and it, it's, it's good, it's, it's, it's okay, right? Our soul is okay. Now, we, it's not evil, it's not evil. But if we have this thought that our soul is evil, then what do we have to fix? Our soul. And my body, I, you know, Andrew said, well, we're good. My body's not really good. It's kind of falling apart at times. But it's not evil. So I don't have to fix it. I might have straightened my teeth a little bit, but I didn't have them all pulled out and put implants in. God gave me teeth. Thank you, God, I have teeth. My, so my body's, my body's not evil. Your soul's not evil. Your spirit's not evil. If we're, resa- if we're saved, we have the Spirit of God within us. And so the idea is, how do we express God out of us and through us? And even Mike, this afternoon, he's talking about, you know, I see us as a sponge. The, the story that he was telling, I see us ourselves as a sponge. And as we receive from God, what happens? It just overflows and overwhelms me. And it just can't help but get out. It just can't help but get out. But if I'm stuck in trying to adjust my sponge all the time, then I lose the ability to hear and feel and and receive all of this for God so that it can come out. Now, I I was in Haiti teaching, and I I took a dry blue sponge. And you know, when a sponge is dry, they're hard and they're not pliable, and they're just hard as a rock, aren't they? And they're kind of pale. It was blue, but it was pale blue. And then I took a bottle of water. And what did I do? I started pouring water in the top. What happened? It started getting darker. It started being filled up with the water. It started becoming pliable. But I kept pouring the water. And I kept pouring the water. What eventually happened? It started dripping out the bottom, didn't it? And it's really interesting. So I stopped. And what happened? It just dripped out and it stopped, didn't it? But when I squeezed the sponge, what came out? Water came out. And so as I pour in water, water comes out. You see, and we get in this place where emotions are these things that we have. They're an expression of what's on the inside of us. And so what we're looking to do is all the time we have anger management classes. So we're trying to manage our emotions. And the Father's like, I don't know the Father wants us to manage our emotions. I think he wants. I, I think he actually uses them as an expression of who, of what's going on on the inside of us, so that we know where we are or when we are walking by the flesh, and not walking by the spirit. Does that does that make sense? So I lost you already, or we're still there? So does God have emotions? God has emotions, doesn't he? Where did our emotions come from? From God. Does the earth have emotions? Does the physical earth itself have emotions? But it says it groans and anxiously awaits. Is Anxious, I think we put that up there, didn't we? Anxiety. What if God gave the earth emotions? And its anx- creation itself is anxiously waiting to be restored to its former awesomeness. But think about it. We've been restored to our former awesomeness. We've been made whole, haven't we? What part of us has been made whole? All of us. You see, they've set it up for me beautifully for today. Right? But we have all these expressions. We have all these emotions, these things that come out of us. But my thought is that they're tied to our feelings. Are you okay with them being tied to your feelings? Is, is loneliness an, an emotion? Is loneliness an emotion? Would you say, oh, what is, an, what is a lonely person, how does a lonely person emote? Sadness or something. 
Okay? So can I have feelings of loneliness? So maybe a feeling would be lonely. Okay? And we'll tie that to sadness maybe. And uh, could be some fear. Rejection. Rejection. Yeah, because now I'm alone. Right? Maybe some anxiety. Maybe even some embarrassment. I kind of threw that in there. There could be a, t- a lot tied up in loneliness, couldn't there? Now, if I, have, if I have feelings of loneliness, what's my thought? I'm alone. Right? I am alone. That's amazing, isn't it? So how do I fix the emotion of embarrassment? How do, I, how do I adjust my feeling of loneliness? Now, what would my flesh do? Come on, what would your flesh do if you... Oh, I feel so lonely. Find somebody. Right? I'd join us. Here's, here's godly flesh. I would join a small group. Right? It's still flesh. It's still me coping with what? My feeling that I'm a loneliness. My thought that I am alone. Who's got a Bible app that can look up John 16.32? Somebody read John... A good Bible? A real Bible? I, ha- I have a real Bible too. John 16.32. If anybody grabs that, read that with Bible drill, you get a, a star or something. For the time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Guess who said that? Any guesses? Jesus. Jesus, right at the time before he goes to the cross, he says, What? You will all leave me, and what? I will be alone. But then he, then he said the truth. What was the truth? I am not alone. You see, so in, when I have emotions, when I have feelings, when I, have, I can tie them to thoughts, and then I adjust my thought, what happens to my emotion? That changes, doesn't it? It, it gradually dissipates. Yes. So what if God was using... I wrote it down here somewhere. It's like halfway through. But, but what if God was using our emotions as the fruit of our beliefs. Because what is fruit? It's what's produced from something. It's just the product, isn't it? Now, we all want to live by the fruit of the Spirit. You see, but we can't live by the fruit of the Spirit if we kind of flesh... These. So I feel alone. I feel lonely. What's the truth in that? I'm not alone. Are you alone? Lo, I am with you always. That's why I don't fly, because it said, Lo, I am with you always. <laughs> I take the bus everywhere I go. Right? He says, I'm, I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Now that's a great truth of God. So I have an option here, you see, when I have emotions. I have an option to say, where's my emotion coming from? My emotion is in my soul, but my soul is not evil. So if I'm having thoughts of loneliness, what's the devil going to try to do? What's his plan? He said, don't be, don't be mistaken. Don't understand there's a plan. What's his plan? Steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. His plan is to get you to flesh out your emotion so that you don't have. Now, which of these emotions are bad emotions? Trick question, but emotions aren't bad. So if you didn't know that, emotions aren't bad, are they? Did Jesus have emotions? Of course he had emotions. And so we know that emotions aren't bad. But if we start to think, ooh, that's a bad emotion, what have we started to do? We started to find a way to fix that 
part of us, rather than saying, I'm having the emotion of embarrassment. I'm having the emotion of loneliness. I'm having the emotion of fear. Very first one. I'm having an emotion. Now, men, what do we... Come on, guys. Be honest now. What's our best emotion? Anger. Anger. I counsel. They say, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm just angry. (laughs) Great. You're angry. What's that all about? Well, they're an idiot. I'm angry. (laughs) Right? Am I... Right? Nobody nudge anybody, right? Nobody, don't poke your spouse if they're here, right? And so we deal with anger. We say anger. What if anger was just the emotion that let me know that it was touching something underneath the surface? That I needed to get in touch with the feeling of what that anger was about. You see, and Andrew said to me, he said, don't make it all counsel-y. But, but part of it being healthy, healthy place for our emotions is to understand what's going on. So I can deal with those emotions. Now, ladies, what's what's a big one for ladies? Fear. Fear what? Anxiety. Well, you got a bunch. I mean, guys were easy. They're all wrapped in one. See, our, we're all wrapped in one. We're just mad. We're just mad. I, I'm trying to come up with the mad scale. Like, if you know, I'm I'm slightly annoyed, and then and then all the way I'm like I'm like you know something needs to something needs to be broken, you know, mad so, somewhere in there, you know. And then of course we're Christians, so we don't like to say we're angry. We're just frustrated. <laughs> just frustrated. We're going to get yelled at by the other two sessions. I know we are. This happens all the time. So we use these terms. Frustrated, anger. Women tend to be, uh, uh, what, what is it? Anx- anxiety or fear? Fear of what? Fear of rejection? Fear of being loved? How about security? Is that a biggie? Insecurities? Okay. Now how does insecurity manifest itself in emotions? Wow, how long do you have, right? <laughs> but what if the Father, what if the Father gave you emotions so you could sense that something's going on? Wouldn't that be cool? See, because Mike talked about all these really neat things about how we move from adult, you know, childhood to, to maturity. He talked about that process in the last section. So when my, when my daughter was born, she had everything she needed to be an adult. She had the ability to, to have babies and the whole thing, right, when she was a little girl. But she didn't start out that way. She works, she's working towards that. And so, and so everything was there already. But how does she grow? How do we experience things? What happens along the way? That brings us to maturity. What does the Father use in our lives to grow us up? Persecutions, things that go on. James chapter 1, count it all joy, my brethren. When you encounter, there's trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, patience. The ability to go through something. Not around it, not not over it, through to go through it. And through that perseverance, we, we get what? And let this have its perfect work in you, that you become mature. How many of you like to be a mature Christian? Isn't that, that's what we think we're, we're trying to attain. Not just in age, right? Because I'm immature at times. I'm hitting, they told me when I hit 60 I was supposed to be mature, but it's not going to work. I got like a year and a half, two years, and it's not going to happen. We would like to be mature, wouldn't we? So what we think is, if I could just get my emotions under control, and so when I see somebody coming, I'm not angry, I'm not, "Uh uh-oh, here comes that person that's always rejecting me, I'm not comparing, I'm 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 not having this flood of emotion... But what if God is using that emotion to work on your maturity? What if He was actually saying, Gary, why are you fearful? I, I had anxiety last night. I mean, we got done, everything was great, I knew there was great speakers today, and now somebody was going to maybe show up 
for this and like look at me like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> you want to have anxiety, volunteer to do a workshop. <laughs> and then you have like six months. And people are like, oh boy, I can't, I'm looking forward to coming years. Like, oh no. <laughs> you want to talk about fear? And so how do you work through that? And the father said to me, Gary, whatever I want said will be said. Whatever I want them to hear, they will hear. Whatever I'm doing in their life, you don't, I don't know any of you that well. I don't know what's going on in your lives. I don't. You don't know what's going on in my life. But I know as we reveal truth, as we hear from the father, he reveals that in us and we, we're changed, aren't we? That maturity process happens. So a healthy place for emotions. I was trying to figure out what that meant. Because I didn't pick that title. You know? I was talking about what are we afraid of uh, in our emotions. So what's a healthy place for our emotions? What if a healthy place in our emotions was to experience them? What if it was just the fruit that bore out what my belief really was? I lived in Maine for a while. And uh, we had a little house that backed up to some woods. And out in the, I don't know about, I don't know if you know, but in Maine, they're famous for blueberries. There's real small ones, they're real sweet and intense flavor, and really cool blueberries. If you ever get Maine blueberries, they're awesome. Well, there were some bushes out in the backwoods. So I talked to a friend of mine, that's like a horticultural guy when we lived there, and I said, when's the best time to transplant some of those plants from the woods into the side yard? Good sun, and they would grow better instead of being a... He said, oh, here's the time. So I went out there, and I found four bushes, and I, I did everything he said, and I prepared the holes, and I all that stuff, and I put them in and everything, and it was great, and they all lived the winter and all that stuff, and, and so it was uh, really cool. In the spring, there were little buds on them. I was excited. There was little flowers on them, and I was really excited. And uh, three of the four plants started having blueberries on them. They, they're hard and kind of green at first, and they started growing. But this one, I, I don't know what was wrong with it. It's something I, I called the guy up. I said, I don't know what happened. This one bush. So then I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's like male and female blueberry bushes, and this was a male blueberry bush. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There's like, anyway. So I called. He said, oh, I'll come over and look at it, you know. So he comes over, and he's looking. And he just starts laughing. I go, what's so funny? He said, Carrie, that's a weed. (laughs) So the three blueberry bushes were producing blueberries. The weed wasn't. But for some reason I was expecting it to. You see, so so what do we, we want the fruit of the Spirit? Now, how hard is it to produce the fruit of the Spirit? It's not hard at all. In fact, I went outside and listened to those blueberry bushes. I never heard them groaning at all. (laughs) There wasn't one of those bushes going, trying to push out a blueberry. (laughs) Not a single one of them. The fact that it was a blueberry bush planted in soil... It absorbed the nutrients, it went up through, and it just produced. Why did it produce those? Because that's what it was designed to do. So guess what we're designed to do? We're, we're designed to allow the fruit of the Spirit just to flow out of us. I have counselors all the time. I just don't have peace. I just don't have peace. No peace, no peace. I, I'm, I'm working really hard, and I'm, I'm trying to get my emotions under control, so I just have some peace. I'm like, Wow. How hard are you working? Really hard. I could just I can just hear him going. Arr! But isn't that what we do? We think I'm lacking something, so I'm going to work harder to produce it. And 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 we talked about early, you know, you heard in the early sessions, self help or whatever. What if there was nothing to do? Wouldn't that be scary? Would you feel insecure? Would you feel exposed? Would you feel an emotion? But even in that emotion, what would God be revealing to you? Maybe I don't trust. 
it's really interesting. As we, as we noodle things backwards, a lot of times we run into this word fear. Every time an angel showed up, what did he have to say? First thing the angel had to do was, before I announce anything, let me just say this. Fear not. There was dread and fear. Here was this angel. I'm not really sure I understand that. I guess as soon as an angel shows up in front of me, I'd probably drop down too and be like, freaked out. But there was this dread or this terror. Why was Adam afraid? It said he hid and he was afraid. Why was he afraid? He was naked. He put loincloths on, some fig leaves or something. But why was he really afraid? What was he afraid of? The wrath of God. The wrath of God? The rejection of God? The uncertainty of what would happen next? Shame. Shame? There was a lot of things going on there, wasn't there? But what we do when we experience emotions a lot of times is we try to rearrange our fig leaves or, or make some new ones. Or, so in other words, we start operating by our flesh, don't we? And the flesh is that thing that, we talk, that they talked about. It's beautifully set up here. The, the flesh is that thing that we use to try to fix things for ourselves. And what we're really trying to do, what God's trying to show us, is there's nothing to fix. We're just learning who we really are in Christ. Who we really are. That there's nothing to be afraid of. That we can trust. But you see, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so I could be fearful. So when I have emotions of fear, what am I afraid of? Unknown. The unknown. Beautiful. The unknown. I don't know what's going to happen. Do you? So we have some normal semblance of like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get up and catch my flight to go back to Atlanta tomorrow. I mean, that's the plan. But it's not guaranteed plan, is it? That's the plan, but God's ordering the steps of that. Um, I taught a lesson once and I said, um, a, a lot of times we have expectations. We put, we put expectations out there, what's going to look like. And I was talking to a counselee and I said, now, I'm going to be taking a flight and it's overseas. And it was like an 11-hour flight or something. But I'm excited because I know they have the little seat-back television thingy. And so I can, I can sit back and I can sleep or eat or whatever. But I know the little inner inner thingies right there and I said so I'm expecting that to work and I'm really looking forward to it but what happens if it doesn't work I'll be disappointed and I'll experience some rejection like the airline said oh Gary's in 11B we'll just turn that one off <laughs> right because I think for some reason they're out to get me or something I said so, so when we have these presupposed uh, um, expectations what happens is we set ourselves up for failure and then we start experiencing emotions and then we don't know what to do with those and don't you know, I got on that plane like a week and a half later, and I sat down. Don't ever use personal things in illustrations. Don't you know that thing didn't work? <laughs> Man, I, I don't know. But they got it fixed. But am I okay? Or am I afraid? Or am I, I'm experiencing emotion when the in-flight thing doesn't work. Is it okay to experience that emotion? Or do I need to go like, no, I don't need to be upset. I just don't, don't be upset, don't be upset. Just breathe. <laughs> breathe, count to ten. Uh, it's, not, it's not your fault. They're not against you, right? But no, what if I just experienced that emotion and I said, you know, that's annoying. That's annoying that it doesn't work. Now the next thing is to say, how I'm going, now how am I going to respond knowing that I'm annoyed? How am I going to respond is really the truth, is the trick, isn't it? How I respond is really what's going on in my heart. So how I respond to my emotion is almost as important as having the emotion. What's the father saying, Gary? The TV doesn't work. Is that a big deal for you? Well, no, father. No, it, it's not a big deal. They're not, they didn't purposely deny my seat internet or something you know tv in my seat there's nobody that's disrespecting me for men i think we get disrespected or we're not acceptable enough and so suddenly my acceptance or you know who picked this seat oh wait i picked it well okay darn <laughs> maybe I, I was trying to find somebody to blame for picking this seat but you see if i don't process through 
my emotion, if I just try to counter or block or fix the emotion, I never get back over to what's really going on and what my thoughts are. And Paul says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, not just our emotion. Not just the emotion. And so Paul says, think on these things, things that are lovely and pure, and think on those things. But if my, my thinking is stinking, then I'm going to experience emotions. And so what does the Father want to do in our soul? He wants that to be um, encouraged, I think is a good word. He wants to be able to have, allow the fruit just to flow out of me. As I'm tapped into who I am in Christ, it just flows out, doesn't it? So what blocks it? The only thing that can block it is when I try to use the flesh to manifest it. To manifest this thing that I need so that I... Because do I have everything I need in Christ? Is there anything He didn't give you? Is there anything where God said, Oh, wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot here. (laughs) That if I pour out my soul, if I just beg God, say, God, give me peace. He's like, Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Gary. I was so busy the day you were born, I forgot. I'm sorry. Here, here, here's your piece. Thanks for reminding me. Or do you really believe you have everything you need? Do you really believe that? See, because you have to believe. You have to believe that God gave you everything you need. Not almost, not someday, but already gave you everything you need. Because otherwise, what do you think? I'm needy. I need something. And my emotions will expose that for me. My emotions will expose where I think I'm needy. But you know what? That's okay. Go ahead and express that emotion. Sense that emotion. You don't want to act out of that emotion, but you want to be able to express it. I'm experiencing embarrassment. I'm experiencing... uh, uh, Happiness. I'm experiencing anxiety. I'm experiencing rejection. What's the truth, Father? What's the truth, Father? And so what we're taught and what we're told is to sort of stuff and, and put in a box and don't, don't emote and don't, say, don't, don't react, don't do anything. And we end up with this mindless sort of like, oh, I've just got to control all that I am. And then God's like, no. No, I want you to be all that you are. I know you're going to be upset, Gary. I know, he knows the next time I'm going to get angry. He already knows. And so sometimes things occur, and guess what? I get angry. But if I don't do anything with that anger, if I don't process anger, if I don't know what to do, then what have I done? I've wasted an opportunity for the Father to show me that whatever it is that I'm angry about, He's already supplied. It's already taken care of. And so I just so what happens? I have to I have to do it again, don't I? So for people who so for people who are in confusion or rejection, uh, um, people come to our office and say like I just I just feel so and so. Great, that's awesome. No, it's not. They say. They say no, it is because what do I know is going on? The Father's revealing Himself to them in an area that He wants to reveal Himself to them. Because they don't know yet that they already have what they're looking for. And so, um, we look at, here's an interesting thing too. We know the fruit of the Spirit. And in that passage it also talks about the, and depends on your translation, the works or the deeds of the flesh. Now, one is works and one is fruit. So I think that's significant. One is the, the thing I'm trying to do to get it where it needs to be. And the fruit of the Spirit is already just pouring itself out. So, so I like the idea that there's works of the flesh and fruit of the Spirit. I like that God made a distinction there for, through Paul. That there's a difference. How many times am I trying to work it out? Right? How are things going? Well, I'm, I'm working on it. What are you working on? Well, I'm trying to get it to a place where I have some sense of peace. Or I'm trying to get it to a place where I have a sense of joy. Or I'm trying to get it to a place where I have a sense of pick an emotion. And the Father's like, no, no, Gary. Relax. It's already there. So there's this really nice 
calming effect. And, and my emotions start to change as I start to realize who I am in Christ. Who He is to me. Who I am to Him. Um, I think a lot of it boils back to fear. There's, there's fear. My wife is sick. We're afraid. But I can't say like, oh, no, I'm not afraid. No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that, that she's not going to get well. But I can say to the Father, Father, I'm afraid my wife won't get well. But what will He tell me? Fear not. Fear not. I love your wife. I love you. And then He says this, Do you trust me? Oh, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that one. (laughs) Do you trust me with your life, Gary? Well... Okay, me, yeah. Do you trust me with your wife's life? How about this one? Do you trust me with your children? Ooh. Now, what casts out fear? Perfect love. You guys are so smart. I love this. Perfect love. Where do I get perfect love? You have it. You have perfect love. See, here's an interesting thing. I I talked to Scott last night. The Bible doesn't say God is a spirit. The Bible says God is spirit. Here's another thing the Bible says. God is love. That's deep. Paul said, try to comprehend the height and depth and width and breadth of the love of God. He said, try to comprehend that. Try to get that through your head, Gary. Is what he, I read that. Through your thick skull. You see, because if somebody loves you, are they going to do something that's bad for you? Like I, I, My wife sometimes thinks I get up with some, try to, some way to make her annoyed <laughs> during the day, right? The first thing I don't get is, say, Lord, would you give me some way that I could irritate my wife today? <laughs> I'm just looking for new and inventive ways to make her mad at me. That's never the goal. It's never a thought. Now, do I do it? Oh, yeah. It just, somehow, there's just this, something in me that just can make her, right? But she does it to me. She does it to me. Right? I can be in the living room, reading my Bible, studying for a lesson, and she's in the kitchen, and she goes, Wow, that just, that just, that hurts. It's this half or this sigh thing, right? And so early on in our marriage, I fixed it. I just told her she couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> so then she started, she stopped. It was really good. It was awesome, right? But then she started rolling her eyes. <laughs> you see, my flesh says, here's how I fix it. The, the spirit says it's already fixed. But if my wife huffs and I feel an emotion, what's really going on? The Father's trying to point something out to me. (laughs) He's trying to point out that I should go and help her. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Most of the time I can't because she's the math department head and she does math with letters in it. And then once it got past numbers, I got confused. <laughs> so it's usually a student who forgot an assignment or a, a needing a test or something, you know. So she's huffing at an email. I don't know what she's huffing at. But the point is, that she huffs and I hear something. If I have an emotion because my wife huffs, there's something going on in Gary. There's nothing going on in my wife, there's something going on in Gary. And so, so many times the Father allows circumstances to come into our lives and He's not mad at you. He's not trying to fix you. He's trying to show you that you don't realize who you are to Him yet. And He wants the very best for you. He loves you so much. He cares so deeply for you that He wants the very best. 
And what father doesn't discipline to get to a place where we understand that? If God didn't care about you, he'd be like, hey, whatever. Just, yeah, go ahead. I, hey, you're going to heaven? Yeah, see you when you get here. Bye. But he doesn't do that, does he? He wants to be the full expression of himself through you, the way he created you, the awesomeness that you are. I'm totally crazy, but that's okay. That's how he created me. And, and people say, I, I hear God through you sometimes, Gary. I go, wow, that's amazing, because I have no idea what I even said. Sometimes I have to listen back to what I play, play back what I hear. I don't, even, I, I don't even remember saying that. But you see, that's the expression of who God is to me and through me for you. Guess what? That's you too. It's his expression of himself to you, through you, for others. Rick Warren's book said the purpose driven life says a really simple thing at the very beginning. You ever open up the purpose driven life purpose driven life book? First thing says what? It's not about you. I just put it down and said, Well there you go then. <laughs> I read the back cover and said, cool dude. So I put it down. But you see, as the Father expresses himself through or, or to you and through you, guess what happens? What happens? Come on, someone's had a God express themselves to them and through them. Isn't there just this amazing sense of your, the love of the Father for you? And, and what is the fruit of the Spirit? What's the first one? Love. Oh my goodness. If I could just understand how much God loves me, and I just have that sense of that overwhelming love, do you know that if the Father totally loved you in a way that you could comprehend, it would crush you? It would just drop you to your knees if you could fully comprehend that. It would just... Moses said, God, show me you. He said, come on, Moses, seriously? Dude, that would kill you. He said, here's what I'll do. I'll put you in the cleft of a rock. I'll cover you. I'll walk by. And as I leave, I'll, let my, I'll drop my hand. You can see the, the just... Man, if you saw more than that, it would kill you. When he was on Mount... Mount what was that mountain? Um, Sinai, yeah. He's up there. He came back all like glowy and stuff, right? Had to wear a veil. Because the veil kept the people... They couldn't, they couldn't even look on it. It was so amazing. Wow. And now God has changed that to the place where this new covenant is all that's in you? That ought to just beam out. So as God fills you up with His love, you're able to love other people. There's an expression of Him. It's not you loving them. It's Him loving them through you. You're so filled with His love. What's next? Love, joy. How many of you like to have some joy in your life? I don't think you can experience joy until you know how much you're loved. I don't know any, I've not read any books or anything where it says why they're in the order that they're in, but I know they're in an order for a reason. But I think if I have expression and understand the love of God for me and it expresses out to you, there's joy in my life. It doesn't mean everything. Count it all joy when you encounter trials. I'm not like, oh, I'm so excited I had a flat tire. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for giving me smallpox or something. I don't know. Right? I'm not ex- it's not that kind of joy. It's that the Father is involved in my life. Oh, Father, thank you for being God to me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to watch you work as I go through this. Help me trust you as I go through this. Because I know, my, my thought is that you will never leave me and you'll never forsake me. Help me to know how much you love me. And you know what Paul says? If you renew your mind with those kind of thoughts, guess what? That will transform you. That will transform you. So, emotions, love, joy. If I can have express the love, or experience the love of God and express that, and joy is in my heart, guess what happens next? Oh, there's some peace, isn't there? Do I like everything that's going on in my life right now? Absolutely not. Like Mike said earlier, there's a lot. I've changed. God, you got some serious mistakes going on here. You need to fix this thing right here. and Forget the world stuff. I just need my stuff fixed. Right? 
take care of this, and you need to take care of this, and you need because you know what? These are messy, and I don't have peace. I don't have joy. I don't have love in my heart. And he's like, really? Just because these things here are messy, you don't have love or joy or peace? Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. But that's what we think, isn't it? That's where our mind lies to us. And, that, and through this thought or this feeling, through this thought comes this feeling and then comes this emotion that's a lie from the devil. We give it power. Oh, I wrote this down. See if this makes sense. Um, emotions gain power or control over us when I attach significance to them. When I make them greater than what they really are, I go, oh, I don't, I'm experiencing anger right now. I've got to work on that. I've just given it some power. How about if, it has, it, how about if it's gained power or control when I try to change it? Because now what am I doing? Now I'm working in this flesh to fix my emotion. Who wrote the book that says if you try to fix the fix that God's using to fix you, he'll help fix the fix? Jack Taylor. Yeah, that was Jack Taylor. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Oh, wow. That's, that's an old one there. We give them power or control over us when we attach significance to them. Now, am I downplaying emotions? No, there's a time for sorrow, isn't there? There's a season for all those things. The Bible tells us that. There's a time for weeping. There's a time for joy. There's a time for each of those. But God never says, live in that forever. You know, it's interesting to me. When Lazarus died and he was dead for four days and Jesus showed up and Mary came running out and Martha came running out, you know, it, it says that Jesus wept. What's that? John eleven thirty five, shortest book, in the, shortest verse in the Bible, right? Or, or pray always, depending on how many letters you want to count. Jesus wept. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. That was an emotion that Jesus experienced, and he knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. See, if that would have been me and I had the power, I'd be like, ladies, ladies, calm down. I got this. Right? Wouldn't you have said that? You'd walk right up and say, Seriously, get over your emotions. Stop crying. Send the whalers home. This is going to be good, right? But he wept. He wept. He was in their emotion with them. That tells me emotions are okay. That tells me that God is in your emotion with you. You're crying, the Father's crying with you. And he's not saying, suck it up, Gary. Quit your whining and your stupid, angry fit there. He's like, wow, what's going on, Gary? You're angry. I sense it. I know it. Why? What's happening? What are you feeling right now? What are your thoughts behind that, Gary? Now, he knows those already, but he's revealing them to me so that I mature, isn't he? So instead of, if I give power to my emotions, what I've done is I've tried to fix these, change these, adjust these. I said that they have some kind of control over me. Am I making sense? And so emotions literally come from feelings I'm having. And feelings are coming from thoughts I'm having. And I wish I was the originator of that, but you can read uh, uh, Victory Over the Darkness or some, some other... Uh, what was the one we were talking about, Jace? Uh, How to Stop the Pain. That's a great book. There's lots of good books about that, you see. But, but that's why it's the renewing of your mind, not the fixing of your emotion. It's, it's, it's we have the mind of Christ. And so for me, it boils down to this fact that I don't comprehend how much God loves me. And if I don't comprehend how much God loves me, I don't know that I can trust Him. And if I can't trust Him, i got to work on this through my flesh. Right? Scott's, Scott's our, our, our direct, our, is our president, and I, I report to him, so he's my boss. And So he said, uh, we rented, he, they rented the car, they put it in my name. He said, well, see how much it costs extra to get another driver put on it or something. Well, that was him saying, I don't know if I want you to drive all the time. And I said, oh, I don't know, but, but I drove. Right? 
I drove. I'm driving the car. We go to the hotel. I drive the car. I pick people up. We go places. I'm driving. What's that help me? Because you know who I trust to drive in Texas? It's only one person I trust. I only trust me. And I'm looking out for you. Because I don't trust you. I only trust me. That's a control thing. Right? And if you have to control, it's going to be tough, isn't it? But control is an issue of trust. If I trust the Father with my life, can I relax? Can you relax? Can you experience love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and those other ones I can't remember? I know there's nine, but I only good for the first four or five. One day I'm going to learn them all. But I have to experience those as I understand that he's trustworthy. Now what does Satan say? You can't trust any of that stuff. You need to be your own person. You need to take charge and take control. If he could... Okay, Adam and Eve, let's just be honest. Adam and Eve are walking around the garden with God. How cool would that be? See, I think we think if we could get there, we'd be good. But you see, they were good. And then the snake thing walks up and goes, yeah, come on, seriously? Just eat from it. You'll, you'll be like him. He was able to tempt them and get them to sin. First go round. Guess what he's doing to you and I? The same thing. Guess what he's going to try and use? Fear, your feelings, your emotions. He's going to want you to just, just either try to suppress them or try to just manage them or whatever he's going to try and do. He's going to try and get you to work in the realm of your emotion. Does emotion lie to us at times? Yeah. How about my thoughts? Do they lie? I know they lie. So these thoughts that lead to feelings that lead to emotions, I think it's a great progression. And so the Father's whole goal in this is to to reveal to us what we don't know about ourselves already. Where we are trying to say things need to be done by this flesh. And I think that's His goal. I think He gave us emotions on purpose. I don't think He was like, oh wow, I didn't think they'd come up with that one. He gave them to us for a reason. So I would say don't be afraid of your emotions. I don't want to act out of my anger. I don't want to act out of my fear. I don't want to act out of my embarrassment. But it's okay to feel embarrassed. Oh, I'm embarrassed right now. Why? I did the whole lecture with my fly down or something. I don't know. Right? That would be... That would be. That's what they say. They say always. What do they say when you go up to preach? Always make sure you have your Bible and your your zippers up and uh, uh, something else. I forget. One time I got up and I, I knew where I was going to go, but I couldn't find my notes. I opened up my Bible and it was right right to the passage and everything. And I had a page of notes. It was cool. I couldn't find those notes. I had no idea. I was like, I don't even remember. I was like, oh my gosh, I lost my notes. I was embarrassed. I'm like, okay, wait a second. What do I do? What do I do? I was like, God, I feel really embarrassed. He goes, I know, you were relying on your notes instead of me. (laughs) That's from the pulpit. Is that cool? I was relying on my notes. If you ask me for my notes, you won't... I don't really know what they are. There's not very many. Let's see if I got through them all here. Yeah, I guess so. What are you relying on? Where have you put your trust? And it boils back to that love, that perfect love is the thing that casts out fear. And so, in emotions, experience your emotions. Experience sadness. Experience anger. Experience embarrassment. um, Anxiety. I'm anxious right now, Jesus. I'm very anxious right now. Do you think he's going to quote Paul to you? Well, Gary, you're anxious right now, so this is God. And Paul would tell you, don't be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, make your request. Don't be anxious, Gary. What would he say? I understand you're anxious. What's going on? I'm basically anxiety. I'm fearful. Okay, why? Because this isn't going the way I think it should go. Well, what if it doesn't go the way you want it to go? 
Well, I don't know. Then it won't turn out the way I need it to turn out, so I won't be okay. And so it's all about me. It's all about me. I don't really care about you guys as long as I'm good. But when I get in that mode and you get in that mode, now we're just living in our flesh, aren't we? In the flesh thing. And that's not where He wants us. I don't know what time... I have no idea where we're supposed to stop, but... Are we supposed to stop or... Probably about time, isn't it? From four to five or something? Ah, uh, darn. Okay. In Romans 8, it says, The mind set on the flesh produces death. And it gives us the contrast in five. Mind set on flesh versus mind set on spirit. But in 13, it also says, Put to death the deeds of the flesh. And that's what I was going to tie back to. It says in, in Galatians, you know, the deeds of the flesh are, the works of the flesh are, da, 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 the fruit of the Spirit is. And it says the deeds of the flesh over in Romans. So Paul wrote that the deeds, those are the works. So what is it, when I have these emotions, when I experience emotions, what is it then am I trying to then work out? What am I trying to do to fix it? Is there a deed of the flesh that I'm trying to say, I need to get rid of this emotion. I don't like this emotion. I need to fix it, change it, do something with it. Versus, okay, Father, right now I'm fearful. Right now I'm anxious. Right now I, I am experiencing this. Show me, what you're, what, show me what you're teaching. What don't I know? What don't I know about who I am to you? Because otherwise I don't know any other way he shows us. I don't know any other way. He literally is saying, through those emotions, experience them and understand them, but tie it back to what's your fear, what's your thought that's not the truth. And allow that truth to penetrate you that He loves you so much. He cares so deeply for you. He's given you everything you need for life and godliness. You're the completed work. When Jesus said it's finished, it was finished. It wasn't finished except for this or except for that. It was completely finished. And so I can rest in that like he rested with the Father. So experience it, process it through, and allow the Father to to minister to you in your emotion. All right? Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for the great love that you have for us. Uh, You demonstrated that love, and that while we were lost, you, you sent Christ to provide that plan and so now we have eternal life we have the spirit of god within us you've made us a new creation old things are passed away behold all things are new so father help us to rest in that father help us to understand the difference between the fruit of the spirit and the deeds of the flesh where we're trying to work things out versus resting and allowing you just to be in us father you created us to be you said i am and then we are So, Father, help us to see that today, I pray. Thank you for this group and their attention. Father, I pray your blessings upon them to continue through the conference for the rest of this weekend, Father. Thank you for being such a wonderful, loving God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name I pray.